and company! Hey guys, my name's Scott Bowling, and you're watching Good Company. Today we have a special episode. We have Sonny, Mayo, Tazai, Clint Lowry, back on the show. I'm back! I'm back! Today we're gonna do 80s, 80s, our favorite 80s pick three. I'm so excited. Dude, thank you guys for being here. <laughs> I'm so excited. This is amazing. Yeah. It's I so the, cool. I love the 80s. I literally man. feel like I'm tripping on acid right now and I haven't done that in 18 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is, this is just real? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it happening right now? I was like yeah. a little boy in the 80s, but I got some choices. I'm yeah, yeah. yeah. You qualify. You were you were Thank aware you, of the eighties, so you, you can do this. Yes. Uh, were you awake then? You were dead. Yeah. Maybe right. in my mother's womb. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Both you guys were in Seven Dust. It's cool having you guys on the show, man. Yeah, man. Unfortunately, yes. we weren't in Seven Dust at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's what I wish. Maybe, Maybe if Seven Dust goes to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We'll get all the seven of us guys. Yeah, plays. You he, know what I'm saying? he was in a huge chapter of it, man. Like you know, Sonny's like I always call that the keeps keep. He he just kind of came in and just. I was a huge fan. Some of those records that they did I, were my favorites. You know, so even though I wasn't a part of them, it was like because I love Sonny. And, and you guys toured did. back in the day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're we did. We Wayne. met through uh, some mutual friends in New York City when I was in Snot and Seven Dust was rocking. And we were kind of slated with each other by these people as like we're the West Coast version of Seven Dust and Seven Dust the West, the East Coast version of Snot. Yeah, yeah. And when we met, we had never met each other before in our lives, and we literally walked up and just hugged each other. Yeah, yeah. We were like, "Hey, man!" Oh, like wow. that's how our relationship immediate, started. Immediate, immediate connection. Like that. Yeah. I rode on their bus more than I rode in our yeah. RV. Oh wow! I was like, and they were all, "Come on, man!" I mean, there was other reasons too, because I yeah. knew how to get certain things from certain people at certain times. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, come and ride with us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're our best friend. Woo! You were that guy. We love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. Real. But I mean, we forged a beautiful relationship, man, beautiful friendship, never ending friendship during, yeah. during those times. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, and so you're going to go first. Mm hmm. Which are all three or first pick? No, just your first Copy. pick. Copy. Yes. Copy. So my first so pick. I'll, I'll get, I'll let me preface it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say, this is Sonny's right. first one. All right, so this is Journey Frontiers. Am I talking to you? Yes. Or you? Uh, Journey Frontiers. Okay, so imagine <laughs> I'm 11 years old at this time, 1983. 80, 83, this came out. And so at this point, uh, I, you know, I already had played a bunch of instruments. I played some piano, I played saxophone, I, I had played viola. And so I already had this musical, you know, stream going through me. And so I, then I started to tr listen to music and find the things. And so this record in particular came into my life when I was going into puberty. And so I started to, you know, I started to like have this longing for connection and for intimacy with a woman. And then so, so songs like uh, Separate Ways, Send Her My Love, uh, oh, yeah. Faithfully. What else is on there? Dude, you're going in there? order, man. Oh, That's yeah. good. Yeah, That's, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Edge of the blade is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you know yeah, that, right? yeah, That's yeah, what, yeah. yeah. I was like, uh, definitely the opening track of the set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's side two. In this case, back in these days, it was the the chronology of the record was really important. Where it could, we still think it's important now, but it's not as important because people just go poach whatever song they want to hear instead of listen to the whole record in its entirety. And God forbid they would flip it over. But when you flip the record over and you got Edge of the Blade on the second yeah. side, it came out hot. You're all damn, they're coming in. <laughs> Actually, both side one. Separate Ways comes yeah. in hard, and then Edge of the Blade comes in hard on side two. But these guys really, this record introduced me to my heart, to like my passion um, for love. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and rock, you know, and mm. through that like, oh, deep emotional connection. And faithfully, I was telling Clint on the way here, um, you know, it's, I, I, want, I was a musician already, and I, and I wanted to be, I wanted to tour, and I wanted to, and there's a line where he goes, loving a music, loving a music man ain't always what it's supposed to be. And I swear to God, I remember going, <laughs> I want that feeling. I want that feeling of being gone and her going, I wish you were here. Yeah. And then I got it, and it, God, it sucked. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is not really cool. Ouch, it's cool for a second. But he, was like, right. oh. he was right, he was right. Yeah, he right. was right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, so yeah. there's my number one. So my number one's uh, Living Color, Vivid. Nice pick. Yes, yeah. dude. What was, you know about living color? I was, Come on, tell, listen, I was eight years old. I sat on my mama's porch and uh, I was listening to Cult of Personality in my bodysuit. What? Body glove. <laughs> body glove. Body glove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, what color man, was it? What color was it? Mine was uh, no, I don't have that. This is all make believe right oh, here. It was it was pink. hot, purple, you should, you should pink. Just said yellow. Yellow. Yeah. Yellow. That's what it is. Yeah. Cut it. You can edit that. Part. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. So <laughs> the uh, the eighties though, cult of personality was my favorite. That's what I think of when I think of the eighties. You know, I was young, man. That's that was my song on MTV. Uh, but now that I get older, I love this album. You know, every song yeah, yeah. is just it's a crazy album. I love it. It changed a lot of stuff too, man. Mm -hmm. Cultural. I mean, just like you guys played with them too on a cruise, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, Jean credits that. I mean, that that broke so many boundaries in, in terms yeah. of, the, of you know just you know African American man just coming in and just just changing the rock game, just like you know, and and they were just so far and few between when that 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 barrier was broken through, and Jean was like. Huge into that. We all were too because it was such. A, it was just a powerful record all around. Mm -hmm. That wasn't the only thing, but it, it connected so many different. Yeah, things, man. man. It was and such it a power. Pushed into metal too. Politi politically, they, yeah. they 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 moves. You know, had some ripples in the water there. It was incredible. And they're all really good musicians. Oh too. yeah, yeah. Vernon Reed, the so solo. Vernon like, Reed, dude. It was like it's sloppy, but it, it was chaotic and beautiful. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, Love and it. definitive, like in Very, individual. Yeah. yeah, that riff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's my yeah. name. So, all right, man. Yeah, there you go. So I, I'm thinking about, you know, in terms of uh, one of the first 80s rock, rock records that affected me. And uh, this was actually, you know, Diary of a Madman, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, second release on his solo venture. Um, and to me, I, I, I didn't know much. I didn't know anything about Ozzy as a kid. I moved into a new neighborhood. I was around nine years old. And my best friend, this kid, Joey Jakes, was like, man, I, you know, it's his birthday and I wanted to be friends with this kid. So he's like, I want, I want the Diary of my Mad Men record. So I remember my mom and I going to the store and me seeing that and pulling it out. And I have no idea. I'm like, <laughs> looking at the album cover, I'm like, what, what kind of kid is this? Yeah, I never heard anything <laughs> like it in my life. So I, 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 you know, I remember buying this record and he introduced me to Ozzy and, and the whole Black Sabbath. So I learned everything after that. But this record, to me, you know, as a young, very, very new guitar player, um, Randy Rose, as mm -hmm. everyone knows, is you know, probably the most influential, uh, out of all the incredible guitar players Ozzy had, uh, Randy was just the bar that was never, I mean, he's just, he was the soul of what Ozzy's solo career was. And I think, uh, you know, riff-wise, um, you know, Over the Mountain, the first so, first time I heard that solo, it was like, it was game changing. And, and I couldn't wrap my, my mind around it. <laughs> And just you go through each track. And then, you know, back then, you, you look at the liner notes, you see who's in the band, and you know, years later you find out, like, you know, Tommy Aldridge, was he was credited on the record to doing, you playing drums, he didn't. You know, Rudy Sarzo was credited playing the bass, and we all know Bob Daisley was there. So you find all these different things later, and that opens up a no, whole another corridor of... Bob Daisley wrote a book about it. Too, yeah. Right? yeah, oh yeah, 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 he was not happy about it. But, um, yeah, so you know, Max Norman produced. It was just an incredible record. Um, classical overtones uh, that Randy had that still just to me as a kid, it was just the, the sadness to his riffs and Diary of a Madman, the riff, the actual opening intro to that thing was the, was the, the it was the holy grail of guitar riffs. Mm -hmm. If you could play that in our neighborhood, you were like the new, you, were, you knew your thing, man. You were good. So, I mean, it was in terms of my introduction to aggressive shock rock, that whole thing, and Ozzy Osbourne, and just affected me and turning me into the rock fan that I would eventually become. This was the, this was the intro, this was my gateway. So yeah, Ozzy Osbourne. Hell, great choice. Yeah, yeah, he's crazy. Man. <laughs> so he, thought your... it was, he thought it was a rubber bat. Here, I'll, I'll just yeah, hand okay. it to you, brother. Okay, so my next choice is Back in Black by ACDC, right? And so, as Journey introduced me to my heart, you might say ACDC introduced me to my sex <laughs> because there was that like that that thing, man, the yeah. four on the floor feel and and with like um, uh, let me put my love into you. It's like a love song about fucking. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Can I say that on this? You can. Cool. <laughs> Why did you do? Song. Love. Oh, fucking. So, um, <laughs> but also, so <laughs> I hadn't, I was still young, right? I, so I didn't know the, all of the stuff with Bon Scott and all that stuff. I would be introduced to it and realize the greatness of that as well, obviously. But, you know, Hell's Bells and, and Back in Black, there was, and the, there was like a, um, there's a fun element of, of ACDC, and then there's the evil element <laughs> of ACDC, which... I always and so it was always it felt dangerous yeah. and exciting, yeah. man. That's and then that's where like also sex was like, whoa, shit, man. This is like, oh, what, what, 
you know, and so, and then, but it also gave me confidence, right? So, I mean, th I was a kid, I remember vividly being 13 years old and like, it, you know, it was about to go down and I was like, I gotta put on some Mason <laughs> That's right? good. That is how impacting that record was uh, on me. Awesome. Uh, and tantric she didn't sex. shake me all night long. <laughs> What'd you say? That must have been some tantric sex from ACDC, man. Well, right? <laughs> That's not very romantic, but I bet it was good. I didn't make it, I didn't make it to the second verse. It was a little rough. On the, I didn't make uh, it to the second yeah, verse of the first song. So oh, yeah. that's funny, man. <laughs> yeah, you did, man. Yeah, I was 13, man. What do you want? At least you're honest. <laughs> uh, so mine's second pick is Striper. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. We were just you wrote about... for Striper, didn't you? I did, yes, man. I had man. One, one, yeah, I had one song. You met was... uh, Michael in the airport, didn't you? Absolutely, you yeah. Yeah, I, I was a huge fan of Striper, too. Dude, yeah. yeah. So we talked about this on the way here, yeah, or yeah. earlier at lunch today. Yeah. Yeah. Were you a Striper fan, too? I like this record. I like some songs on this record, yes. They played yeah. this album. I will say yes, I was a fan, okay. I can say it. <laughs> they played this album. I rocked a Striper shirt in my high school photo in 10th grade. You How did? about that? Yeah. Do you still have it? The shirt or the picture? The picture. I can find it. Yeah, I want to see that. Uh -huh. But anyway, yeah, I, I, it, growing up, I, I listened to uh, In God We Trust because I was a young little kid. But the older I get, man, this album, seeing them do it from start to finish, man, this is an amazing record. Polished. Yeah. I mean, it was such yeah. a great, big production back then. Yeah, and when they did In God We Trust, the album after this, they really polished it up and tried to do oh, yeah, like yeah. part two kind of thing. Was there a cover on that? What, uh, what was the one? No, that that's against Shining the law. Star. Yeah, 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 yeah. They got that was real their heavy. first single, too. Yeah. <laughs> and Randy Jackson played bass on it. Yeah, that. it yeah. was incredible. He's like, sorry, Tim. And all the Striper fans <laughs> were like, no, it's <laughs> <this is> too much. <laughs> yeah, they were going to hell for that. Oh, uh, exactly, man. It was, like, it was way too uh, provocative, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but anyway, yeah, so I love this record. Yeah, that's a great choice. That's man. my choice, man. All right, man. Great album cover, too. Pentagram. I had a friend that came over to my house, and he was this kid that is a, he was a singer, you know. And he came by and he played. He had to hell with the devil, and he played the tape for me. He said, "This is my new. This is my new band, my new record." And I heard it. and I was like, "I was a huge Stripe fan." I was like, "Wait, wait, wait. This sounds a lot like Michael Sweet, man." <laughs> I'm like, whoa, 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 that's, that's like, you know, so I, there was a whole ordeal, man. We, we like exiled this kid from our whole circle because he tried to pawn, pawn out. I'm like, how do you think we never find that out? It's like Striper, man. So he pulled out a whole cassette tape. That's oh, a yeah, big yeah. story, man. Oh, yeah, dude. He was like, he played it. He was like, sing it. Sing it right now. Sing the high parts. Like, you never know. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's man. incredible. Uh, all right, man. So you're a. Yeah. All right, man. So, you know, Sonny and I, we spoke. And we were talking about, oh man, we're gonna come in real hard with these, with you know, all these heavy rock records. But, you know, in terms of it being the '80s mm -hmm. and influential, uh, Peter Gabriel. So, um, you know, man, I don't know. It, like you were, like Sonny was kind of talking about. You know, it opened up like an intimacy in me. It opened up like I think Peter Gabriel was in, hit, hitting a stride creatively on this. We all mm. know that in your eyes, that the way that song affected everybody, mm. the guys holding the thing. Roy yeah. Dobler, bro. But um, there's a song, the first song right off the rip is Red Rain, and there's oh, a production. Great. You know what I found out too? The hi hat, just the hi hat performance, Stuart Copeland from the Police played on that. Oh, I didn't know. Not the, the rest of the drums. I thought that was very unique that that they would just because Stuart was throwing it down so hard on the hi hat. They're like, hey man, we would like you to guess <laughs> hi hat on Red Rain. So when you listen to Red Rain, man, listen to the hi hat, and that was that was the that was the rumor, and I I don't know if it was ever confirmed, but that was the thing. And I was a huge Police fan, so there was something about the chord structures and the vibe and the energy of these new wave, these the synthesizers and the way he um, he pulled in like all the all this different very tribal beating and mm -hmm. all these different things, and then he had the sledgehammer, just the production of that and the soulfulness of his voice. And he wasn't like a, a traditional high singer or low. He just had this thing of timber. You knew Peter Gabriel, man. And uh, you is know, Mercy Street on that. Mercy Street. Woo! And, you know, and then you got Bro. Mercy Street, which is, and then the uh, uh, Don't Give Don't Up. Don't Give Up with Kate, Kate Bush. Bush. Great song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I my heart all fell that. Fell and it was just there was something about yeah. it emotionally. The these songs made me feel. I remember listening to Red Rain over and over, and I had this girl that I loved at the time. She didn't love me, so I was like playing it. And I mean, you know, you, you zone out, and it was a, it was a true escape. It really was. Mm -hmm. You know, people say it was therapy. I would put this on and just like, you know, just be heartache and just pain, and it would make me feel better after I would listen to it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, so it, it affected me mu musically. Um, huge. I never talk about these things. It's usually rock influences, Steve Vai, 
Eddie Van Halen, Zach. But th this, uh, musically, in terms of songwriting, was one of the biggest things, man. So, so Peter Gabriel all the way along. Hell yeah. Look, he was like, he was, he was ready, man. Yeah, he was like, yep. like, he was like, yeah. He's like, who needs Genesis? That's just fal falsetto, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. Yeah, who needs you? <laughs> and and we, we talked about this on the way here. We were talking about that record, and there's a reason it's called So. Yeah, yeah. Why is oh, that? Yes. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So. It was mm. his fifth record, and that's the fifth wow. note. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, you need a sound effect. Yeah. Pretty rad. You want to do it again? Pretty rad, dude. Do it. <laughs> no, no, no. On three. <laughs> Where was I? I didn't hear one, but we did it all perfectly. We're a bunch of dorks. We're a bunch of dorks. <laughs> It was a silent three. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, okay, so it not. so uh, Journey introduced me to my heart, and ACDC introduced me to my sex, and these guys introduced me to my fire. <laughs> Master of Puppets, Metallica. All the elements. Oh yeah. And so this was when. All right. So I had like between those, you know, up until that point from '82 to '86, um, I was into rock, and you know, and I obviously listen to all kinds of other stuff, but. But it was more uh, Motley Crue and even like Neil Garaldo from Pat Benatar, like Crimes of Passion was another one of my call, call outs for rock um, 80s records. <clears throat> but then when I heard this, everything shifted. I heard the down picking of James Hetfield mm -hmm. and the just the precision and like just focus. And uh, um, and there was all the they were you were bringing in that vibe from uh, you know the the English wave of metal and stuff that had almost like Motorhead, Iron Maiden had a punk feel to it at times. Mm -hmm. And so this you know molded this Metallica, especially this record, molded my entire high school experience. Mm -hmm. Like I had the denim vest, mm -hmm. which I do still have, with the cut off and the thing and the patches and I still got marbles. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm rocking it, Red, Marlboro Reds. Yeah, 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 yeah. high top fucking. Why not? Know, yeah. Moccasins. <laughs> <laughs> I had the white. I had the white did, like did, Nikes uh, or Reeboks or whatever, <laughs> and the tight Moccasins. jeans. I didn't have spandex, but they were still pretty tight. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I could go through this whole record each song. Not necessary, you know, because somebody got, you know, things to do. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> somebody's got their life to live. Yeah, but man, yeah. this shit. When I the beginning battery, I was like, what's this? And then the epic just build up, and I got to actually meet Cliff Burton. Oh. August 2nd of 1986, <clears throat> a month and a half before he died, I was at Meriwether Post Pavilion in Virginia, uh, uh, Mar in Maryland. Uh, he was opening for Ozzy. It was when Hetfield had um, had uh, broken his, yeah. his wrist. I remember that. And James mm -hmm. Martin from Faith No More mm. was... Uh, was filling in. He I was know. on the side stage, but and but he, I mean, he killed it. And so we were third row, and and me and my two friends were like the only people that seemed to know any Metallica at the time. And so we were rocking out, and Clint and Cliff, Clint and Cliff looks over a couple times and gives us a thing, and I was like, oh shit, Cliff Burton is here. He pointed at me, and so and I thought it was the greatest thing ever. It was. And then during the Ozzy set, we're all fist banging, you know, they're doing the thing, and my boy grabs my arm and pulls, turns me, goes, look. And Cliff Burton's standing there, and he's got a fedora on and with the cut-off flannel, and he's like, and he goes, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Oh, it was nice to meet you, man. And he's like, hey, thanks for coming out. He thanked us and was like, it's all about you guys, you know. Thank you. Wow. And he goes, I gotta go. I'm gonna go get some French fries. That's the last thing Cliff Burton ever said to me. I'm gonna go get some French fries. Yeah, man. And he disappeared. That's a good choice. And five yeah. minutes later, I was like, <laughs> fuck, we should have gone to follow him and got French fries with him. Yeah. yeah. But you know, it was 15. But it was amazing, dude. God, that's yeah, amazing. so that's my third pick, and it defined really defined my approach to guitar as far as rhythm, right hand precision. Mm -hmm. um, not much of a lead player. I can play some stuff, but right hand is you know I was have been come I've come to be known by that. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, there's that. That's great, man. Pretty rad, yeah. Yeah. It's a little band called Faith No More. Oh, we were just yeah. talking about them. Yeah, Speaking of man. I absolutely love this album. So when I was a kid, like uh, I always go back to when I was a kid, but. Epic came on, on MTV, and I would sit around forever trying to wait for that video to come on, mm. you know? It was amazing. The album is crazy, too, and I was so young, uh, Zombie Eaters. Yes. <laughs> Dude, I haven't, I haven't heard, heard that song? I haven't heard it's that. Like it's like a now. tribute to Black Sabbath, really, Zombie Eaters is. There's a, there's a version Chino sings on it. Oh, my God, With really? El Nino, man, it is so Whoa. cool. They cover that song. Whoa, it's yeah, a yeah. good cover. Yeah, it's on a, but yeah. Anyway, it's a, it's a great album. And also, I don't know if you guys like listen to podcasts and stuff, there's a, a a podcast dedicated to Faith No More, and they go through all the albums. Nice. Wow. Song by song. It's so good. And I didn't know, like, most of this album was already written before uh, Mike was in the band. Do they have any of the people from Faith No More on the podcast? Um, 
Uh, they may. I don't think so. Yeah, that'd be cool. I should get it. But, yeah, so anyway, that's my choice. Uh, you guys like Fade No More? Oh, Everybody man. does. Oh, Hell man. yeah, dude. I, Is there anybody that doesn't like Fade No More? No, man. I mean, think about the boundaries they broke. I remember mm. we were playing in clubs, uh, cover band stuff, and all the 80s stuff, typical stuff, and then that video would come mm. out, come on, and there was just something where it just make everyone in the club's head tilt, like... This is different. Mm. Like, oh, this is this this. They're 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 not following the rules, you know. Mike Patton had that very kind of soulful voice and the guitars and just and it was and rappy, then, but not yeah. Too, and then know, you go yeah. into the Mr. Bungle and you start finding who where where it was spawned from. But Faith the Mormon Man was gigantic. Yes, mm. like, it changed yeah. every. I think it affected. It created corn. It created all a lot. It just that you can Rap sing. Rock. I mean, you can have yeah. You, for the most part, yeah. It yeah. was the first thing that on a, on a big world stage. That's what they were like. And I don't think they even enjoyed the big the, the stardom, you know. They and this were, was like right when all the '80s bands were happening. You know. What yeah, I mean, so I mean it was right in the middle so of different. it. Yeah, well, yeah, and it was also on the cusp of grunge. Yeah. Mm. So it was just about to shift. So only a few more smiles got in the door before grunge hit. Mm -hmm. You know, I played with Ugly Kid Joe for a while, and Wit, that was Wit's line. He was like, "Yeah, we were the last smile to get through the door." <laughs> <laughs> the court everyone sort of, you know, yeah, yeah, everyone started getting you know, upset, which is cool. I love that stuff too. But that's yeah. the, how it went down. But those, and then the second record yeah. that that Patton was on. Uh, Angel Dust mm -hmm. was completely, they did not give us an epic. They were like, oh, not were part like two. No, we're gonna do what we wanna do. And so Angel Dust mm -hmm. was whatever they wanted to do and it got weird, sometimes like Bongle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then of course, King for a Day, Fool for a Lifetime. That's my favorite one. Same. Yeah, same. Unreal. Really? That, was, that record was, def that record in particular was definitive uh, for what the, all of us in Snot were listening to when really? we were, yes, that record in particular. I love when, that album. When we were putting our, our Getting ourselves together, mm -hmm. that was a constant soundtrack mm -hmm. in our in our King for a Day, Fool for a Lifetime. Yeah, Mo man. help mold snot. It's such a oh, great wow. title, man. Yeah, yeah, it is. Also, the first clutch record. Oh yeah, help mold snot. Yeah, yeah. As far as at least you know, it, 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 insp inspired, influenced yeah. maybe, but inspired. Like you wouldn't listen to the snot record and go, "That sounds like clutch." That's no, like, no, yeah, but I, it, I get it. You know, yeah. the inspiration it, it was there by mm -hmm. those that the yeah, fire. There's a spirit to wow. it. Yeah, you know, I want that. Sp yeah, mm -hmm. spirit, absolutely, man. What you got, bro? Oh, what you, yeah, what you got? All right, man. My last um, Judas Priest, Screaming for Vengeance. Um, album covers were huge back then, and they had. They had hit a stride on this that was unbelievable. Same era as the Diary of Madman, same effect. Someone introduced me to Judas Priest. Have you ever heard of Judas Priest? This is the first one I actually mm -hmm. heard. Um, my tragic story about Judas Priest, I'm going to give this. My older brother, Corey, I had tickets for Judas Priest to see him screaming for vengeance. They were killing it. It would have been my first concert ever. And I, I stared at the ticket uh, on my little window sill there for like a month before, you know. And then Corey like taught me how to go into the concert. Man, he said, man, the people stab you at concerts, man. There's all kinds of uh. it's pandemonium, man. You don't want to do it. Give me a ticket. You get a little older. Def Leppard, Pyromania is coming. You can go to that concert. But the, we're doing that, that was like the next one. But I never got to see this oh, tour. Oh, you didn't go? I never went. And the all I did was hear the story. Yeah, Corey did. Yeah. But um, <laughs> that, <laughs> bitch. Well, what affected me about this record, it was all about the intro. And like you admit, nodded to Shout at the Devil. The beginning of that, the intro was like basically this is, it, this that's what pulled me in. The yes. Hellion was, to me, just the ultimate. I was absolutely sold just listen to the intro. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, that's it. I mean, I don't give, I don't care what happens after this. I don't care <laughs> yeah, what you, you play. Got, got me. Like, don't run out. Oh, yeah. I was like, I had the headphones and I'm like, every chill, like every, I mean, I was just like, this is too much. <laughs> and then Rob Halford comes out and the, the vocals, the dual guitars, and there was just such a, and um, you know, they hit like this, they hit like, they hit a stride. There was like, Bloodstone was another riff that was just mind boggling to me. One of those things that, I try to learn master puppets. If you learn that, it's, those are the, the the building blocks, the guitar playing. Mm. If you learn how to play that, if you learn how to play Bloodstone, you know, and then they have very simplistic simplistic elements to their music as well. Um, but man, this this record affected me. The, the album cover, the continual uh, process of having some juggernaut kind of entity on each mm -hmm. one. Like Iron Maiden had their stick mm. that was amazing too, and there was always the debate: Judas Priest, Iron Maiden. I was always a Priest fan. I love both, but Priest was always a little bit on the edge. Mm. And I love the album covers and just like stared at this thing and I'm like, that is the hell yeah. That is the most scary bird I've ever seen. <laughs> the <laughs> missiles. I'm like, why missiles? This and is incredible. And it's screaming for Benjamin. Yeah, yeah. Like, ah, like, yeah. yeah. There's like a no, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, 
And then that, when he does the scream, scream in the background, yeah. <laughs> I went, that's, that's that thing. That's that You're thing. You're like, oh shit. <laughs> and it put like, oh yeah, that's absolutely what that noise is. I like, scream. And then, uh, so yeah. It's brilliant. Um, I never got to see it, but uh, eventually met Rob years later, um, just to you know, pay tribute and say thank you. But yeah, this is great, man. Oh, great cool, choice. Man. Yes. Mm. And nobody got stabbed at the show, probably. No, man. Well, how about this? I got, a, I got a story for you. I got a story for you about Corey, how he tortured his brother. All right. he, his first day of school, he convinced him to wear a cape. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he told me that in 1997. Oh, he told yeah, me that. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, he traumatized. And wooden what? shoes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got a call, yeah. Thanks, man. Wooden shoes. That's a great brother. Wooden shoes and a cape. I don't want to go into that. That was, yeah, it happened, man. Oh, my God. We need a follow-up with Corey. Just yeah, man. That's He's something. got stories, man. I got a bone to pick with Corey, man. Yeah. Yeah. Wooden shoes. Torturing my friend his whole life. Yeah. I forgot the wooden Don't shoes. get stabbed, but put on these wooden shoes before oh, you go dude, to class. Yeah. He, right, he, Dad had a great time at the concert. You know, so yeah. I went to Def Leppard Power Man. Yeah, that was my first one. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got eventually. Mutt Lang did all that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. awesome. Decent producer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he did a he Hey, do we got f- three, four minutes for uh, honorable mentions or no? Uh, we got a minute because we got a. Yeah, pur- we it. talked about the way Purple Rain. Yeah, Purple yeah. Rain. Prince actually literally kicked me into puberty. With all, with like the visuals, mm-hmm. he had Wendy and Lisa, he had Apollonia, he had uh, uh, Sheena Easton and Sheila E, Sheila and it was e. like, oh, and the, so, and I was so, and I already had rhythm, so I was like, oh shit, and then all, then all this, these women, so it was like, oh my god, I was like this weird little, kind of African American uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, guy from Minnesota was like, hey man, here. <laughs> Here, go into puberty and, and be a man. And he could play better ah, than our, yeah, pretty much everyone. I, I mean, he was just a musician. Yeah, dude. His musicianship was We all go, damn. Man. What's your honorable mention? Do you have one to go off the top? Man, I don't know. I, you know, if, I mean, if you want to go, is it still in 80s or still in 80s? Let's say in 80s, yeah, yeah. All right, man. There's too many good ones, man. I know. Um, we- I'll say, man, I got to say Doc and... Uh, just because Tooth George George Lynch, yeah. Mm, but you know, I became a George Lynch fan really in the Lynch Mob, where okay. really blossomed as a guitar mm. player. But Dokken was like they affected me, man. Like I loved all that, you know. Warren D. Martini, George and and Warren, had you know, George thing. and Warren were both just had this same kind of picking style, and it just like you know, stylistically, I thought their solos were very tasteful mm. and all that. So yeah, Dokken, Dokken. That's they good. did a bunch of cool stuff, and yeah, rocking like Dawkins, man. Yeah, like, dude. Yeah. Dawkins was like the American Scorpions. To yeah, me. yeah. Th- absolutely. Yeah, totally. Yeah, Dawkins yeah. to me was like Nightmare on Elm Street, Dream Warriors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. so funny the age difference. Like when that when, but that was still they were still out. They were yeah, still doing dude. it, and that was I, I bought into that too. I was yeah, like, yeah, good. it's a little weird, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate you guys being here. Sonny. What a pleasure. Yes, thank you, man. Clint, Thanks, man. Thanks for being here, brother. Oh man, always. Yes, always. man. All right, man. Thank you. Peace.